In this lesson, we're going to look at the Solaris context where you can set up lights and cameras. So we start um, back in the geometry level and we just want to place the uh, soccer ball on the ground. So we're going to use something called a match size node and justify it to the minimum um, in Y. That puts it up on the ground. And that sets us up to bring it over into the lighting context. So what we need to do is go up here and go to a different desktop. We're going to go to a Solaris desktop and this currently points at a place called slash stage. So there's nothing there because it doesn't um, automatically bring things over uh, from the object level. So we go tab scene import. We can go in here and start to bring things over. So if we go to the, we'll just use the force objects and pick the soccer ball geo. This means even if we hide it at the object level, it's still going to appear here if we need it. Now we use our normal view tools to tumble around and get a, a sense of where that is in the scene. And now we want to build a, a bit of a backdrop for that. So we'll just uh, first name it, go soccer ball. And within this view we have a, a new pane in the bottom corner called the scene graph. And that basically is how geometry, when it's brought into here, gets converted into USD, uh, which is necessary to render to the Karma render or any other render delegates here. So we put we can put a grid down here. Now you notice I'm, I have to display either one or the other. I can't do both. Uh, we'll fix that in a bit. We're going to call this backdrop, and we're going to go in and and just enhance this um, piece of geometry a little bit. We'll start by uh, its size. So we can go to the size here on the parameter pane, just go 80, 80. And we'll leave it in the center. Uh, oh, or maybe we'll move it in minus 20 along Z, uh, just to make it a little off center. What we can then do is um, we're going to zoom in, you know, get closer to this. We can right click on the output of that and type bend and we're going to bend the grid. So we start by just giving it a bend angle. Uh, we'll put 75 in there. Um, now it won't be bending the way we want initially, but we can make some adjustments to that. If we scroll down to the, way down at the bottom to the capture region area, we're going to do a capture origin of minus 30, and we're going to do a camera direction of minus 1. And um, there we go. Now we can press uh, right click on that to do subdivide, set the display flag, um, and we'll just uh, subdivide a couple extra. So there we go. So this was built at the geometry level, but, but the geometry level sitting inside a node uh, here in Solaris. Solaris is also referred often as LOPS for lighting operators. Um, and there we feed the backdrop into the soccer ball, and now we can display the two at the same time. So if you hear the word LOPS, that refers to Solaris and working um, on the stage. So now that we have that set up, um, we can also right click here and add a camera. Um, set the display. Now the camera, by default, we just want to move it back and maybe move it over, um, move it up and up. And we're being very careful to use the constraining it along these axes just to get what we want. And there we go. And we're looking towards the camera from, or toward the soccer ball rather, from the side. Now if we uh, do a construction plane, we can also just move the center areas here. We don't have to worry about the constraining so much. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Construction plane might be necessary if you're going to click around with the center. Now once we have that, we can actually look through the camera. So we're going to look through the camera. And then we can lock the camera um, so that we can do view tool, view, view changes rather, um, to sort of knock it off to the side and make sure we're looking from below. So we tumble, track, dolly in a little bit and get, you can also use those handles there in the camera, but sometimes the view tools um, work more effectively. And unlock that when we're finished, just so we don't, um, later view changes don't get in, get in the way or lose the camera. We're gonna bring an environment light in, press enter. Um, set some intensity there. We're just going to 0.5. We don't want that to be the major um, contributor light-wise, but it, we want it to be there. Return on Karma. Karma is a render designed to work with USD, um, which is why everything in Solaris is converting it into USD. 
um, and that makes it a hydro delegate that's available for us here in the viewport and later to render disk. The button we just pressed there is the optics denoiser. So if you have an NVIDIA card, you can turn on that denoiser and it helps resolve the image a little bit faster. And one of the nice things about uh, working here in the viewport like this is uh, you can keep working, uh, making changes, and the updates will be available to you almost immediately. And then you just you know you don't have to wait for it to resolve 100% to get that. So we're adding in a second light, a point light. Um, we just clicked on the shelf tool. Now immediately it's looking through the light, uh, but we're going to actually position it a little bit differently. So we're going to go back to the camera, and you see a bunch of tools up in the top bar. And we're going to go to the shadow one, which is um, there we go, and it's the fourth one there. And what this allows us to do is use shadows to determine what we're going to, how we want the light to go. So we click on the surface and then we shift click to say that we want that surface to cast a shadow to that point. And um, this is a very nice way of working. Um, we then press the control key to move it uh, away from that point. And we can use control shift to increase the intensity of that light from that particular point of view. So now uh, we can also increase the density by hand if we want. And if we want to move that point, just shift and pick a different point where we want that shadow to be cast. So you can explore different options. And the beauty of this is you're in the viewport making lighting decisions instead of, you know, in a 3D view off to the corner trying to visualize it in your head. You're just getting that right here and there. So what we'd also like to do is maybe add another light into this. So we're just going to put one here in the um, network view. That's another way of adding a light. And again, instead of trying to position it, uh, we're going to use the specular option here. And we're just going to click on that spot there. And it will set itself up to put a specular highlight right there on the soccer ball. Now again, we'll press the control key to move it away and control shift to increase the intensity. Um, as a matter of fact, we might even want to go maybe go up to 400 to really get that. You see where the specular highlight is on the geometry based on where we clicked. So very nice tools for setting that up. We also have a little option if you don't want to see the handles in the in the viewport um, in case it gets in the way of your rendering. And there we go. So now we've set up three lights uh, in the scene, interactive. Two of them done interactively. And now we want to put something down called the light mixer. And this allows us to consolidate all those lights and begin to tweak them as a set. And this um, you know, works really well in a number of different ways. First thing is we have these sort of sliders, these interactive sliders, which allow us to go in and, well, first thing we can do is we can solo the lights. Like, oh, what's the contribution of the dome light? What's the contribution of this? Uh, that was our third light that we added in. And what about the point light? OK, that one's a little, a little less. It's not contributing as much. Maybe it's further away. Now we can in here start to bump up intensity and exposure and say, OK, no, we really want that one to contribute a little bit more. Uh, and then unsolo it, and we can see how the impact is on the scene itself. And if we think, OK, we went a little too far with that, maybe we bring that back down, or maybe we bump it down even lower. And we get the, um, the look updated as we make those changes. So as you can see, the Solaris environment is a great place to set up your objects, uh, set up your lights, and begin to explore uh, all the different options. And you can see we can turn lights off, we can solo the lights, and um, get what we're looking for. So in the next lesson, we're going to add some texture maps to this and add materials and see what that part of the workflow looks like.